Whether you're a motorhead or race enthusiast, it's unlikely that you haven't heard of Street Outlaws by now. When the show hit TV screens in 2013, it instantly became a favorite for speed lovers all around the world. Nonetheless, before the list became internationally known, Farm Truck was already well known in the Oklahoma City street scene. Thanks to his decades-long experience as a driver and enviable skills as a mechanic, Farm Truck and his longtime race partner Azen maintained a good spot on the list while gaining huge fame through the show. However, there's still a lot the audience doesn't know about Farm Truck, including details about his private life as well as his profession off-camera. If you've wondered about these things as well, keep with us to learn all. Although reality stars are known for revealing too much about their private life, that's not the case with Farm Truck. Despite being active on Instagram, his preferred type of content usually has to do with either street outlaws or any upcoming race event, leaving any glimpses of his personal endeavors aside. Besides all the speculation about his family and romantic life caused by his preference for privacy, it's the mystery surrounding his job off-camera which brings out more questions. Truth be told, it's unclear if Farm Truck works in any car-fixing shop. However, it's known that he and Azen own the f &A Firehouse, a fire station turned into a shop in which they sell original apparel and car accessories. It's unknown if any mechanical jobs are done at the f &A Firehouse, but judging by pics found online, it's clear that both drivers have part of their car collections displayed there. For all of those who are unable to visit the f &A Firehouse, online shopping is available on its website. It's unknown how profitable Farm Truck and Azen's business actually is, but seeing the many sold-out collectible items listed on its website, it's assumed that it's doing relatively well in the money department. While Farm Truck's real business seems to be advancing on the right path, he has also tried his luck by becoming an online content creator. With over 100,000 subscribers and 15 million views in total, it could be said that Farm Truck and Azen's YouTube channel is on its way to success. Their content niche is what anyone would expect from them, including trips around the US, promoting their shop, and of course, an exclusive insight into their car racing endeavors. Occasionally, both men try some of their rarer products, such as their Pimp Juice Traction Formula, or the Street Outlaws video game, The List. Nonetheless, while the channel might be on the rise, their earnings from it most likely come from advertising third-party products, something they also do on Instagram, with more successful results. If there's something very clear when it comes to Farm Truck and his business partner Azen, it's that they're creating a brand around their careers as drivers. By setting up a website totally focused on their race team, creating merchandise and documenting their life on the road, they're slowly but surely expanding beyond the limits of TV. Though only time will tell how these projects will turn out, it's certainly helping Farm Truck and his best friend to become some of the best like Street Outlaw racers. Just by knowing the Street Outlaws has several spin-offs, a video game saga, and that its stars have hundreds of thousands of followers on social media, it's not hard to confirm how widely successful the series is. Furthermore, it's not surprising that the huge fame Farm Truck has achieved thanks to his TV appearances ended up with him and his race pal Azen having their own show. Premiered in late 2020, Street Outlaws, Farm Truck and Azen was a two-hour-long episode centered on their then-current car projects. Although many viewers expected to see the duo having fun, speeding up the road, the fact that said episode was actually recorded during the COVID-19 contingency left them with almost no races to film. Regardless of the very unique situation they were going through, the pair were never once to just sit and wait. That's how the special described Farm Truck and Azen showing the viewers private car workshops, planning daring projects such as the Air Cannon car and the haunted hearse, in addition to racing a Zamboni machine. Despite going in a very different route than Street Outlaws audience was used to, features such as first-person cameras, snippets from past seasons, and glimpses of plans for the main show's future made the special episode noteworthy. Long before being known as Farm Truck, Sean Whiteley was already well-versed in the street race scene. Although growing up in an Oklahoma rural town near the legendary Route 66 didn't inherently mean he was into cars and speed, the fact that there was not much going on out there definitely pushed into that world. His early years were spent driving his mom's 1974 Dodge Dart, which he modified with a slant six engine passing then to take his dad's 1973 Ford pickup when he was experienced enough. It was that same car which led him to discover his love for big cars. As he told Motor Trend, I was excited to get behind the wheel of the truck. That's what turned me into a truck guy. Despite being an adventurer by nature, a big part of Sean's teens was spent working half-time as a janitor and foundry assistant. It was thanks to that work-study program that he afforded a 1970 Ford Camper Special, the first car and truck he ever bought. Regardless of his previous driving experience, he didn't jump into racing right away. 
he first got used to residential areas before daring to stretch a car out by going 100 miles an hour, about 160 kilometers per hour, on the Route 66 highway. Although already his favorite, Sean tried many of those vehicles before finding the right one, thanks to an Auto Trader magazine ad. That's how he ended up with his 1970 C10 Chevy pickup truck, the farm truck which gained him his nickname and many street race wins. Contrary to people's general assumption, Sean's everyday car is not the Chevy farm truck, but a 2006 GMC Duramax, also known as the D, a truck that he finds no defects in. According to him, there's no dislikes at all in it, as he finds it comfortable, powerful, and just as importantly, it takes him down the road just fine. Besides the powerful Chevy farm truck that Sean and Azen have raced for several years now, the FNA's rusty fleet is bigger than that. Starting with the Dung Beetle, this 1966 Volkswagen is one of Sean's most preferred cars on the track, along with the Farm Bird built by Sean, Azen, and Jeff Lutz. Other speed machines belonging to Sean and Azen's fleet are the Gonorail and the Skid Truck. Just learning to drive at high speed isn't enough, at least for Farm Truck. Making his way into the Oklahoma street race community was more a matter of having fun. After eventually meeting a young Azen in the street race, both men instantly knew that they were meant to become a team as well as best friends, despite the age difference. However, Farm Truck and Azen's goals go beyond entering the famous The List or earning quick money through fishing. According to the website, the pair's main motivation to race doesn't have to do with money or fame, but the satisfaction they get catching others by surprise. Before debuting on TV, Farm Truck's skills behind the wheel became well known thanks to a viral video someone shared of him on the internet. However, fame was a dream that we never had, according to Farm Truck. But knowing that there's people out there who appreciate what he does for fun is rewarding. Farm Truck is undeniably a Street Outlaws fan favorite, partly because of his evident confidence on the road. Some of his most memorable times on the screen include racing against his fellow Discovery star Aaron Kaufman with the Farm Bird, or just fighting for a spot on the list alongside Azen. While reality stars aren't usually very open about how much money they have, sometimes it's not hard to guess how rich a celebrity actually is. Though there's no official statement coming from Discovery or Farm Truck himself, it's rumored that his salary from the show is around $20,000 per episode. If we take into account that he appears in Street Outlaws and almost all of its spin-offs, then it's not hard to imagine how profitable his career on TV is so far. Considering his earnings from TV, appearances in car events, along with his income from the FNA Firehouse and paid ads on his Instagram account, it's estimated that his net worth is over $2 million as of late 2021. Despite becoming a hit show in no time, the story behind how Street Outlaws came to be is not like any other. For starters, just the fact that a show's setting is apparently illegal is the first clue that this is not the usual run-of-the-mill TV production. Passing from driving almost undercover to being showcased on national TV was unexpected. Back in the old days, the list was only known by its members and those who wanted to be on it. It was only when independent filmmakers shared videos of them online that they started gaining some fame beyond the community. Though at some point, the list caught the attention of TV producers, its original members weren't too convinced by the sudden interest. According to Joe Woods, known as Dominator in the show, he and his fellow race drivers thought that they were being set up by an undercover police operation to see them in jail. Regardless of their understandable distrust, it was soon obvious that it wasn't a trick. Street Outlaws not only became one of Discovery's top shows, with over 2 million viewers per season on average, but it also showed the street race scene in a more favorable light. Every Street Outlaws viewer knows that drama is a common factor in the show. That's only expected though, as the series is set as an environment where rivalries, money, and ego is involved. That's why it was so surprising when the drama surpassed the TV screen and involved the National Hot Rod Association, the NHRA. The organization sets every rule in the drag racing community, in addition to acting as a governing body of all that happens in it. As expected, the NHRA isn't quite receptive of street outlaws. In 2015, they not only expressed their negativity about awarding official race licenses to the show's cast, but even warned them of being ineligible for events organized by the association if they continue to appear in the series. The reason for these admonishments was the alleged potential danger that street racing entails. Although NHRA's warnings were taken seriously, it seems that it didn't affect the show greatly in the big scheme of things. Just like any other reality show out there, Street Outlaws isn't believed to be completely real. Although the show's illegal factor is admittedly interesting and enthralling, it's the main reason for distrusting the series' legitimacy. Nonetheless, 
the most of what we see in the show looks to occur outside the law. That's not the case. As the website Screen Rants affirms, the series production actually has permits for every race you see on the screen. As well, strict security measures are in place during filming, such as reported in 2014, when Tulsa's police officers were apparently guarding the street where the show was recording an episode. Despite how disappointing this might sound, it's only logical that Discovery won't put themselves in any difficulty by openly exposing and approving an illegal activity. However, this doesn't mean that street racing doesn't happen in real life, but the closest we would see to something similar is certainly thanks to street outlaws. Regarding other factors, such as staging and scripted scenes, it's hard to tell what is real and what's not. As it's obvious, having to keep the whole facade of illegality inherently means that the show's cast has to pretend certain things in front of the camera. However, it's unknown if the races and winners are staged. Anyway, what's for sure is that despite the mysteriousness behind Street Outlaws, the race drivers in it are certainly genuine. And at the end of the day, it's them who actually make the show exciting. Don't try and tell them that they're faking it. Thank you for spending some time with us. Make sure to like and subscribe so you never miss another video. We also handpick these videos which we recommend you watch next. You can talk to us on all social medias or ask a question in the comments below. Thank you for being with us and we'll see you back tomorrow.